Regards from Taiwan. My name is Orzub. I'm Ukrainian and I am visiting this amazing East Asian country in order to build closer ties between our nations, which, by the way, found themselves in a relatively similar geopolitical situation. So in this video, I would like to examine a little bit of the history of Taiwan, check out the modern time and probably take a close look into the possible future. At the same time, we are going to examine what are the possible scenarios of developing situation which is kind of tense here in Taiwan. And for that reason, we will speak with a few experts and uh, local representatives who will uh, provide us a much better insight into the situation in Taiwan. So please join me and let's start. I would like to start this video in a very special place which will give us an insight into the history of Taiwan. So basically this is a so-called treasure hill. This is a combination of a, like questionably built range of houses on a pretty steep slope. And yeah, it looks a little bit kind of beaten up. Yeah, it's like pretty chaotically built over there, which goes up into the hill you can see some structures built over there and on the skyline we see a towering modern buildings this place mirrors actually the modern history of Taiwan because this particular area was settled by soldiers and their families who came to Taiwan Island after the Second World War together with Chiang Kai-shek the leader of the Chinese nationalists after they actually lost the civil war with communist China. This was the start of a modern nation of Taiwan. Being supported by the United States, the country got integrated into the Western economy, eventually flourishing economically and uh, being one of the 25 largest economies on our planet. Besides that, Taiwan is one of a few truly democratic states in Asia. So the first settlers actually came, came down here from their motherland in mainland China and started building here yeah, these type of houses, putting the community together and actually building up into a new country. So people started living in those communities and forming a new nation where spirituality obviously should take a very very important place telling ahead i can say that taiwanese people are super super polite and you can see here temples all around the city this is actually one of them so it's basically was serving the needs of this entire community as we understand and let's let's check it out inside and see how does it look like? It's worth noting here that religious-wise, Taiwan is pretty diverse as well. Approximately a third of the local population follow Buddhism faith, uh, another third Taoism, and another third, you know, are non-believers or maybe do follow something else. But what is worth noting is that it's always very peaceful here inside, and obviously such temples do serve their main purpose. People feel in harmony with themselves, to rethink many ideas, yes, and obviously to feel much more confident in their life. Something what I'm really fascinated in Taiwan is how they're trying to integrate different traditional motifs into the modern architecture. Just take a look at this amazing complex being built on a vast square in the middle of the central business district of Taipei. And obviously we cannot miss this, this tower, which is Taipei 101. So Taipei 101 for quite a few years used to hold the position of a 
tallest building in the entire world. And needless to say, the most innovative techniques were used in completion of this structure. I would like also to tell that uh, there are different uh, security and livability measures being taken very seriously in, in Taiwan. So just for example, currently it's almost impossible to build a large building without a specialized bomb shelter in the basement of it. So they take it very seriously and this is something what we have to learn from in Ukraine because who knows how a similar um, uncertainty will carry on in Ukraine having such an aggressive neighbor. On the first day when Russia initiated a full-scale invasion on Ukraine, I have started English language media channels to inform the entire world about the event in our country from the ground. And it happened that one of the largest audiences that started to follow my online activities at the early stage of the war were Taiwanese people. One organization with whom we developed uh, some of the warmest relations is Taiwanese Digital Diplomacy Association. So uh, obviously being here in Taipei, I could not miss a personal meeting with them and now invite you to their office. Let's learn more about what they are doing and working on. So Eileen, hello, Hi. nice to see you. Thanks for uh, inviting us. And uh, this is a small present for you from Thank Ukraine. You. So the sweets in the a ne like military national mm -hmm. uh, topic, but also which will sweeten your um, <coughs> I don't know day. The day, <laughs> the, the day. Cool. So nice to see digital diplomacy live eventually after so many <laughs> day, like actually years of online presence. I mean, thank you for you know keep keep like keep the contact, and it's really great to see you in person because like uh, a year ago we have been collaborating on. Facebook and that post actually went viral because uh, during the outbreak of Ukraine crisis people in Taiwan we really care about what's happened in Ukraine so at that time I mean that kind of social media post is actually like um, it's actually like a relief for our side because we know that our, our friend from Ukraine is, is doing well right now but I know that it's, it's still a really serious situation in the ba uh, battlefield and I know that there's uh, the, something bad happens going on but I know that the bravery and all the strengths that you can have been showing to us are is still going to continue forever. Digital Diplomacy Taiwan is doing an impressive work all around the world promoting Taiwanese culture and at the same time they are cooperating with different organizations in terms of media cooperation. So last year we had actually a good good uh, some you know, catch up uh, between our actions together and some of the material that we produce in Ukraine have been published also here in Taiwan uh, to draw attention of the local society to the events there because many people actually relate uh, the Russo-Ukrainian war with the uh, local situation here in Taiwan. So uh, they make an impressive work and I'm pretty sure uh, you need to learn more about what they are doing. So some of our, um, so we have been doing some kind of research on different kind of content on how to, you know, like this mm -hmm. kind of bravery to be Ukrainian and also how to do kind of advertisement and trying to do a lot of advocacy towards the different officials and how to gather information, uh, gather like resources, collecting research um, as well. So we have been, uh, you know, like, collecting some kind of uh, the examples that you guys have been doing pretty, mm -hmm. you know, like pretty impressive. And we hope that it's, it's also been like the lessons for Taiwanese to learn more in the future. So um, I think this is, so, so this book is, museum. Oh, yeah, yeah, the History of Museums, mm -hmm. because we also been collecting um, some examples from the artists and also mm -hmm. some examples from uh, officials and mm -hmm. some examples that we can uh, to deliberate by uh, the, like normal people here in, Thai, in in Ukraine. So we have uh, categorized this kind of action book in eight different kind of characters in three different kind of scenarios. So um, we hope that by doing this, it can help to raise the, I mean the uh, national security kind of awareness here in Taiwan and also learn more about 
um, what Ukraine has done so far. Yeah, uh, so, so I, I see here. Banka. <laughs> yeah, this, the, you know, like this is a very like phenomenon which became popular in Ukraine now. Like this is the part of uh, you know of a screen in the mobile app of a banking system mm -hmm. where people just open, let's say, a saving account. Oh. They give a link, share it online, and everybody can just donate on this saving account. And then you use this to buy, you know, something for soldiers or for some other like initiatives mm. which are helpful for Ukraine. So oh, there are oh, yes, like another are yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is they pretty impressive been... job. You, 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 you know a lot about things that happened in Ukraine. <laughs> uh, because we have like a group that have been doing some research. Mm -hmm. So we have been uh, collecting some information mm -hmm. and doing a lot of translation uh, for uh, for almost a year on doing this to, to publish this manual. So, so this manual actually can work as a guide for civil society, how to accumulate their stronger parts and resist yes. if necessary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's actually a manual and also like a book that you can just grab and then you can actually like get prepared for anything bad happen. So uh, we're collecting like 25 different kinds of uh, examples and some highlights mm -hmm. and actions that Ukraine have been doing so far and into three different kinds of categorized into eight different kinds of characters and under three different kinds of scenarios. So um, mm -hmm. I think this, this uh, manual can also um, bring, we hope that it can bring like a reminder for Taiwanese and also we hope that it can help to help uh, Ukraine to get more exposure. And if you want to get like the physical one, you can also sign up for our form as well. We can also send it to you. So how people can find you? Digital diplomacy on Yes, Facebook. we have like a Facebook page. We also have Instagram and we also have Twitter account and, and LinkedIn as well. If, if you want to find us, I think we can also like give you guys a little link to sure, our yeah. page. Yeah. <laughs> So you guys like can follow here below the yeah, video yeah, yeah. description so cool yeah, so. another outcome which became pretty uh, unobvious for me and which i heard from you is that mm -hmm. you, you you told the question that uh, we realized here in taiwan that the war is the job of every citizen not only yes. the army mm -hmm. and you know in ukraine uh, this came very naturally when we, we became under threat everybody mobilized in different ways you know from a granny who was baking uh, some bread and send it to the front line to outdoor companies that uh, switched their production lines from making the outdoor gear to military gear mm -hmm. uh, from restaurants that started to donate 10 percent of their income and you know feed soldiers so it's, it went all around and it's really inspiring that ukrainian example uh, can set standards right in the entire world for that for the uh, civil society resistance movement hmm? that's how it is and now i'm reconsidering this thanks to our taiwanese friends Thank you, thank you for your work, for all the cooperation. Thank you for uh, Wish all the best for Taiwan and uh, let's just carry on. Keep up the good job. Yeah, yeah. you too. So now we are visiting one of the historical streets among traditional quarters scattered here around Taipei. And I think it's a good chance to talk a little bit about the history of this uh, impressive country. So first of all, the island of, of Taiwan was traditionally settled by a native population of the Pacific, more similar to uh, Malays, more similar to the different like Pacific islands than to uh, Han Chinese, which uh, started to resettle here in the 16th, 17th century and very quickly became the majority of local population. So basically you can tell that this used to be connected with the rest of China pretty significantly until the end of the 19th century when the island of Taiwan got occupied by then uh, growing and expanding its own territories, Japanese Empire. And for the next 50 years it was under Japanese control. 
after the end of the World War II, as a result of the civil war in China between the nationalists led by Chiang Kai-shek and communists by Mao Zedong, Chiang Kai-shek forces together with the supportive population fled from mainland here to Taiwan and were supported by Americans who were now actively involved in the newly born uh, Korean War. So it was a good station and another like tool of influence in the Western Pacific. Thanks to that, Taiwan got integrated into the Western economy. Uh, it quickly grew and expanded its GDP, becoming one of the four Asian tigers, together with Singapore, Hong Kong and South Korea. So because of this, the local population um, developed their own different identity than of mainland Chinese. And basically, they're not really happy about more and more connection and even possible integration into China. So uh, that's why the events in Ukraine played a key role and draw so much attention to the local population. And uh, the future still remains really unclear. Uh, the only thing I know is that uh, Taiwan is an impressive country with a unique culture, a uh, strong economy and a very promising look into the future. I was lucky enough in Taiwan to meet people who represent local Ukrainian community, which is not very sizable, but super, super active. Alex uh, from Ukraine here in Taiwan, you can identify him because of this flag and he's busy, busy doing something. Well, what have you been doing just right now? Uh, right now I'm uh, helping my friend here record a, uh, a video about his uh, time in Taiwan, but uh, generally what I do here is uh, I work to support the Ukrainian community. We have a small organization of volunteers called Taiwan Stands with Ukraine. We organize events, food events, rallies, fundraisers, uh, stand and protest in front of the uh, Russian office here and generally do everything we can here in Taiwan to rally the Ukrainians and the Taiwanese to support our country. Slava Ukraini! Heroem Slava! The, the street I am seeing here is actually, it looks very very heavily influenced by by japanese uh, architecture and the organization of the street you know mm -hmm. this is what i've seen uh, in japan right so it yep. really had an imprint yes and there are a few other places there are uh it is traditional you know brick houses the arches the walkways um, a lot of these houses inside actually have been gutted and rebuilt uh, so just the facade is left but yeah a lot of japanese architecture around the older parts of taipei and in relation to this, you know how I usually describe Taiwan when people ask me? I hope it is not insulting, but this is like my observation. Yeah. So I tell that like Taiwan is the combination of Chinese people, Japanese etiquette, yes. and American like mindset. If it's yes. like a little bit of this, yeah? A little bit of both, yeah. Chinese people who have discovered democracy. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But yeah, no, definitely heavy influence from all from all three. Uh, plus, plus all the indigenous Taiwanese as well, exactly, yeah. who maybe are not as visible, but certainly a big part of uh, you know the current president, the vice presidential candidate. They all have uh, indigenous Taiwanese heritage as well. So uh, important part that has been suppressed under. Chiang Kai-shek, but this is now definitely something that people celebrate. Some of the streets in Taipei here don't really feel like you're in the 20th strongest economy in the world. It still look pretty rustic, low-rise with a lot of like labor around but this is actually an example of uh, old 20th century high-tech economy with all these like details you know that were manufactured here on a large scale and you know making the entire world kind of dependent on the local Taiwanese production
during my time in uh, Taipei, I'm meeting different people, mainly Ukrainians and Taiwanese, who somehow participate in this international matter and are stakeholders in different movements. And one of my uh, colleagues and guests here is uh, Maria. Maria, hello. Nice to Hi. see you. Thanks Thank for, you for yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like I'm very happy to meet Ukrainians all over the world, especially when they play a crucial role in building bridges between the, the, the particular destination mm -hmm. and Ukraine itself. So, like, can you briefly tell what you are doing here? So now I'm a scholarship holder here, and uh, I'm studying Chinese. Okay, I'm trying to study Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because this is mm. I have never learned some, uh, something more difficult than this language, okay. but it's extremely interesting. Uh, but uh, meanwhile. While I'm here, I also try to explain uh, uh, people in Ukraine more about uh, about Taiwan and Taiwanese people. Explain more about Ukraine and uh, uh, to find way, uh, ways how we can connect uh, our countries, how we can build uh, closer ties between Ukraine and Taiwan. You make some publications about it. Mm -hmm. You deliver some talks. Uh, participate in particular meetings. How, how does this work in mm. practice? Uh, in Ukraine, for example, I try to publish articles about uh, Taiwan and uh, Ukraine and China also, uh, or give interview, talk to people who work in different media and uh, people like you, bloggers, yeah. Uh, yeah, who can help me to spread my thoughts and information. Uh, if we are talking about Taiwan, uh, mostly this is uh, statements on different events, uh, summits uh, or meetings. And also now I'm trying to find more stakeholders in Taiwan who uh, can uh, be useful for Ukrainian stakeholders sure. for further cooperation. So, so what's the general perception of uh, Taiwanese society and maybe officials towards Ukraine. Taiwanese people, uh, officials, and uh, just uh, local uh, local uh, citizens, they think that uh, Ukraine. This is uh, great examples of bravery. Uh, they try to support us as much as possible and all people here, locals uh, whom I met, they also try to show their support, try to say how uh, proud uh, they are because we are doing something that they hope they will be able to do in the uh, case of uh, China invasion. Mm -hmm. How do you see that Ukrainian officials and Ukrainian society relate to Taiwan at the same time? Uh, I can say about officials because on official level uh, Ukraine keeps silence about uh, Taiwan and we have reasons uh, for this actually because China uh, uh, is a big partner of Russia and uh, uh, Ukraine on official level still uh, afraid that China can send more and more help to Russia and uh, this will be pushed. So basically Ukrainian officials don't want to take some real like serious measures in terms yes. of softening relation with Taiwan, being afraid that China can answer and escalate. Yes, because uh. it's really can be uh, mm. like this. So uh, on official level, Ukraine, uh, for now at least, uh, keeps silence. But uh, uh, civil society, active uh, society, uh, start to understand more and more information about Taiwan. Because earlier, two years ago, we didn't have enough information about uh, Taiwan and China. Uh, but the uh, situation is changing step by step. Uh, I'm, uh, one of many person who try to help uh, who perform this job and I start to understand not only uh, threats that China is causing to uh, Ukraine but also a perspective uh, a positive side that Taiwan can bring to our country and yeah. uh, for this we still need to make a lot of informational job because as I as I know in uh, our country uh, first of all society needs to understand the problem uh, find out how we can solve this problem and then uh, we perform advocacy work uh, to our government and to try to convince government make cha the changes so for now we are on society level we yeah, try to spread yeah. as much information about Taiwan as possible exactly and I'm doing actually this in my Ukrainian language channel so if by any chance you know Ukrainian language I'll provide here a link there will be another video in Ukrainian language about Taiwan so mm -hmm. feel feel free to watch it and share with your Ukrainian colleagues mm -hmm. some people take even the step further 
and you know there are quite a few uh, legion fighters uh, in Ukraine so I personally know a few people and uh, uh, in this video guys uh, you're going to meet one of the Taiwanese uh, boys who was actively participating in the combat in Ukraine. So please stay tuned and let's continue exploring Taiwan. Thank you very much yeah, and good you. luck with your work. You too. <laughs> bye bye. Being here for a few days, um, I kind of like see this atmosphere of complete calmness, uh, peace, people are walking around and you know, I really had a different perception of situation in Taiwan before coming here because in the Western media, it feels like it's like we are standing on the brick of, of like on the edge of the war, of the edge of the invasion. But when I talk with the local people, they tell like, I mean, nothing is happening. So, uh, like, my question to you is, like, what was the reality? Like, how does it feel like to be inside? Because you are here, like, for the last four years, probably, right, Ruslan? Yes. And yes. Uh, tell me, tell me, how does it feel to be here? So, honestly, this is a very funny question because even though you might feel that Western media are exaggerating about whatever is happening around Taiwan right now, but in fact, it's not that much of exaggeration. From my personal believing and my, my feeling of the political situation here, it is indeed very close to war. Mm -hmm. If Ukraine will lose, war will happen 100% for sure. It means Ukraine will not lose because people will not fight for Ukraine. Ukraine might lose only because Western countries will just abandon the support to Ukraine. If they will support, uh, abandon the support, if they will not unite to support Ukraine, it means they will not unite for the country that is officially unrecognized by most of the world. Even though, okay, all, most of the semiconductors manufactured here, but the same semiconductor manufacturing, even just older generation is in the United States, in Japan, now in Germany and somewhere else. So there are alternatives now. I feel Western media are not really exaggerating, but at the same time, local people, they're absolutely relaxed. This also reminds me the evening of 2022 february 23rd mm. i was sitting with my friend in a similar cafe not with such a beautiful view but anyway in my native city and we were, you know we were building plans for the future about like our app development and travel plans and then six hours later at 5 a.m my friend called me and told orest it started of course i, I believe like you know, the military confrontations like is a really, really serious topic and now the reaction of the Western world with the support of Ukraine and the massive sanctions on Russia actually showed to China that probably it's not the best way to do it, right? So there is like another way, there, there's political scenario over, over here or what? You know, there's the thing about like there is some similarities but also some differences be between situation in Ukraine and t in Taiwan. In the meaning that, in fact, the war in Ukraine started in 2014. We all remember that very clearly. It just, unfortunately, the propaganda was so strong that the whole world thought it's just a civilian war. When we, Ukrainians, we were sure it is Russia who stands behind that. So there is one thing that the war in Ukraine started relatively recently in 2014. So all the memories are very fresh in our heads and we know who's, who's fault in this war. Taiwan and China, they had confrontations with missiles and artillery exchange at least a few times. But the last time was just only in the memory of grandparents or maybe the like very old parents of yeah. local like current generation. So it means that, you know, you know how people say like time heals everything. Yeah, yeah. The that same happens. unfortunately happens about political views and the friendship between countries, especially if you don't shoot into each other anymore. So you may speak, you want, I want to kill you, Orest, I want to kill you right now. I will keep saying this like for 40 years, but I will do nothing. And people will be like, ah, it's okay. Like he was saying this for 40 years, okay. nothing's gonna happen. You're getting relaxed. That's what's happening, unfortunately, with Taiwanese. They're just getting relaxed. But it doesn't mean that China is not planning something. And I believe there was not really an active combat since the foundation of Taiwan, right? There was an active combat with rockets and artillery shelling 
I may be very wrong about the days, but it, it, it was somewhere in like 60s or 70s last time. And it wasn't the first time. I think it might be the last time. Like two generations ago, basically. Yeah, so yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like a lot of years, like many years passed after that. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem that people just don't remember. Those memories are still not fresh. And even though Taiwanese, they have a concept that at some point, maybe the control over Taiwan will go to China if they are not fighting for Taiwan well enough. They have this concept, of course, some people. Yeah. But they do not have a concept how China will get this control here. Mm. And they do not have a concept that China was feeding propaganda against Taiwan for the last like, 40 or 60 years. And Chinese like, like absolutely hating Taiwanese people. Some, of course, they, 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 they may like them. They may be more like right in terms of their political views and more like moderate. But there are freaking a lot of people, especially in the military, who wants to do everything possible, the most cruel things to Taiwanese people. Mm. And those are the ones who will be sent here as the first, second, third, fifth wave, doesn't matter how many waves, they will be here. Like and the, the problem the, the, that Taiwanese will realize that they made a, made a big mistake when their sisters, mothers, daughters, I'm sorry for this, will be raped here, when they will be stealing all their properties, when all men will be will be killed and prosecuted just for nothing, it will be too late by that moment. It feel it, it, it sounds like a fantasy. However, if you would tell similar things in Ukraine three years ago, it also would sound like a fantasy. Actually, Absolutely, actually. exactly. Yeah. Absolutely, exactly. I've yeah. been watching for some like uh, my favorite uh, influencers back in Ukraine, like YouTubers. Very clear example: the channel Shlemia, like in in helmet, basically in in, in Russian means. Yeah. And the channel stopped the moment the war began. The reason is because one guy who was very pro-Ukrainian, he straight away he signed up to the Ukrainian military and went to defend their, their, his homeland. And another guy, another co-host, he was like, why should we kill Russians? They are our brothers. We have so many relatives there. So you have this like bipolar view in the public opinion here in Taiwan as well? Yeah, unfortunately, exactly. Two major political parties right now in Taiwan. Uh, it's uh, DPP, which is Democracy, People Party, something like this. But generally, they are actually for the democracy and for the Taiwanese independence. For example, current president of Taiwan is the democracy candidate. Mm. The executive yuan, like local parliament, they are also mostly held by DPP people, most of the independence change or at least moves into this direction you can actually see in just last four years. But a second strongest party in Taiwan called KMT or short from Gomindan. This is exactly the party was fighting for with communists inside of like China. These are like the fathers ago. of Taiwan basically. Exactly. Yeah. So they lost to communists fighting with communists in China mm -hmm. and they refuged to Taiwan to gather forces and go back invade China and fight with communists sometimes in the future, which didn't happen, of course, but nevertheless, that was their intention. And right now, the Guomindang is the party who is absolutely against the freedom here in Taiwan. I mean, they are saying they are for the freedom, of course, technically. In fact, they have very close ties with Communist Party and with China, okay. and they are fighting for the friendship between nations with China, exactly like it was before 2014 in Ukraine, when we finally threw out our Yanukovych president who was doing ab absolutely okay, the same. Like, well, that's it. But anyway, like something what we know for sure is that very soon the elections will happen. Uh, by the time the video will be published, there will be the election, then the results. And we'll actually have the more clear picture of the situation in Taiwan. So I hope everything will stay the same lively, the same calm as it is now. And uh, wish you all the best. Thank you for sharing thank you, your Aris. opinion and uh, let's keep in touch and let's carry on, yeah? Yeah, thank you, Aris, All the best. Yeah. See ya. Taiwan is basically an island a little bit more than 100 kilometers east of the mainland China and Asian continent. According to the geography and local fauna, it's even more similar to Pacific Islands than to the Asian continent. So this is an example of a really, really dense vegetation in the middle of a bustling city.
man many things here are very well planned and adapted for simple comfortable well-being so for example this kind of track is nothing else as a pedestrian walking area in in this kind of park which is taking us to a classic residential area of Taiwan so through such a small passage we are getting from a middle 20th century area into something that I would call late 20th century just take a look pretty bustling streets with a lot of businesses uh, creative chaos everyone is doing like you know their own stuff very bright advertisement over here and also the buildings looks a little bit kind of gray but anyway there is a showtime uh, cinema as you can see which tells us that the life goes here their own way in a proper proper pace so I, I think this corner is one of the most illustrative over here so uh, like we can see some uh, traditional entrance to the restaurant then a modern chain uh, of grocery store 7-eleven then there is a combination of some these cartoons very sim very common in East Asia and obviously the cinema some uh, modern advertisement over there and people simply just roaming around here comes the long-awaited moment which is actually the reason why we visited Taiwan and this is exhibition of my lovely wife Marta here in the art fair Hello everyone, I would love to invite you at least virtually to join me. So here we are participating in an art fair and it's very unusual experience for me because in Europe we don't have art fairs at hotels. So here we are in a five-star Hyatt hotel and on two floors, 11 and 10th floor, we have exhibitions, actual art fair. Um, and I invite you to join for a virtual tour. So as you see here, after the registration, we are on the 11th floor and you have the name of the gallery and the room so you can enter inside and see which art uh, is available there. And because it's an art fair, people are coming here not only to see but to buy something. And I hope you will sell some Ukrainian art and it will stay in some private or not private collections here in Asia. So now I would like to invite you to see our art on this art fair. So the room number is uh, 1105 and it's Flippin' Here Ukrainian Exhibition and you're welcome! From the beginning you see already some art installation uh, made by Olha Kuzura, Ukrainian artist. She's now with uh, me and here in Taiwan. Actually she's now here so we'll have a chance to talk to her. So that's her, uh, her artworks and more on this wall and then we have over there and the great news that we already sold some artworks and I'm very happy because it means that collectors here in Asia want to have Ukrainian art. Can and you explain a little bit about your uh, uh, represented uh, works here? Um, yes, of course. So we brought uh, part of this exhibition from Ukraine and part of this exhibition uh, was created here in Taiwan one and a half year ago. So here is representation of uh, four Ukrainian artists. Uh, Olha Kizura, I mentioned already. Maria Kroshkovska, we have photography and video art. And then we have Mira Bochkur, which came with me last time, uh, a previous time here to Taiwan. And she created those artworks here in Taiwan. And Veronika Cherednechanko. Uh, also, she created a VR and video, but we are not ex like uh, having having it here. And uh, generally, the topic I'm less a curator uh, set for artists to work on. It's about um, memory, but in very broad um, meaning. 
especially concentrating on the memory and how it influences our decision making and actually what influences our memory like childhood, culture, country, trauma. So all of that is the um, topics we are discovering through art. And of course, war is present in each of the artworks. It's just not that obvious. It's not that straightforward. But when you read text uh, explanations for all of that artworks, they're related to the war and to the experience we are living through now. And <clears throat> also one great new news that um, yesterday I had a very good chance to communicate with the uh, representatives of uh, art associations, um, of art galleries, art fairs from around Asia. They came also here to participate. And the uh, um, Minister of Culture was here yesterday and I showed him our Ukrainian art. I explained the topic, I explained about Ukraine and our art and culture, and that was very great. I think that's, uh, that's my contribution to this grassroots cultural diplomacy, even though we don't have cultural um, at all, almost, um, official connections between Ukraine and Taiwan. But I believe with such initiatives as mine as, or my colleagues, we can build those bridges and get closer. I believe this is super, super important, and Marta, congratulations with uh, with this huge success, I would say, because, you know, uh, we need to build more bridges, and uh, the the war, the now, like, the chaos, the situation in the global uh, scale is something that is just a massive, massive um, turbulence which is happening. So, everyone on their own level, within their competence, should you know, participate and make best possible impact. So, for example, uh, just a few days ago, I had a meeting uh, here in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the person who is in charge of Ukrainian direction actually asked me directly, like, Orest, what can we do in order to help Ukraine in the most meaningful and impactful way? So I provided a few recommendations and hope that very soon we are going to see the results of this work. Actually, Taipei ranked as a 8th or ninth in the ranking of the best transportation, urban transportation system. And you really feel it. It's really convenient here. I have noticed just something. Look, there is an air defense uh, shelter sign which going down to the metro. And this actually reminds me of events in Ukraine, how people used to shelter in Kyiv and the Kharkiv metro uh, to save their own lives against Russian attacks. So there are some, some signs here that it's not really that peaceful as it looks in the outside. So. Uh, if the future still kind of looks unsettled, the threat from uh, mainland China is kind of present and it seems like it's, it's growing. So uh, who knows what will happen in the future. Let's make the best out of what we can and see and follow the events in the nearest time. Wishing all the best to Taiwan. Today I am taking the fast speed train which will uh, take me to the second largest city in uh, Taiwan which is Taichung. There I am going to meet uh, my friends uh, whom I still uh, remember from our first visit here nine years ago. 
and uh, hopefully we'll spend a good time. It's worth noting that the high-speed uh, railway network in Taiwan was built in late 90s and extends for over 350 kilometers and the speed of the trains can reach up to 350 kilometers per hour. So just to give you a comparison, Taichung is located 180 kilometers from Taipei and I'm going to reach it in 40 minutes. Can you believe it? The entire area of Western Taiwan where the high-speed railway is stretching is heavily built up, uh, which actually makes Taiwan one of the most densely populated countries in the entire world. So on a small area of 35 thousand square kilometers we've got a population of over 20 million people which is also pretty impressive wow that was pretty fast So the main reason of coming to Taichung is actually to meet my good old friends here, good old Chung friend. and his entire family. Hello. Hi, hello. So uh, guys, like we met like what, like nine years ago when we were here. Yeah. Do you do you remember it? Yes, of course. Like w w how how was it? It was really cool to have our first Ukraine uh, visitors in our family, and uh, Oris and Mara also visited our school, the school I was serving. Uh -huh. in Yunlin, south part of Taiwan. And they were giving a very good presentation to the students. Exactly. So you were like in school, but you, as far as I remember, you were s serving. So it was like the alternative for a military service. Yeah, yeah. so for guys in Taiwan, it's either military service in the army or alternative service in like pub, uh, police station, fire station or schools. Okay, okay. So you choose like this one. Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. I was lucky. Yeah, like, you know, in Ukraine now there is martial law and uh, the conscription is uh, ba basically mandatory. It means like everybody is somehow is supposed to participate in the, in, in the army and uh, just like add their own stuff to them and, uh, and also like participate in our resistance. So uh, in my case, I'm trying to do this international cooperation, as you can see, and basically build bridges between the Ukraine and the rest uh, of the world. Guys, I'm very happy that you met me. It's a big pleasure and um, you know uh, when people think how do you like wh where you get this energy of happiness usually you have it when you meet an old friend yeah uh, uh, and that's where your smile comes and you consider like how it was it was very positive and now the world is different but we remain almost the same right mm -hmm. so make make use of it and keep ma maintain relations with your friends thank you Oh wow, so I remember this place. I remember we were here. So uh, we had a picture somewhere here together, right? Ah, if you want to, yeah. you, you have to change this one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, it means even if you don't make your business, you are still friends. Even if what? If, you, if the business doesn't work well, you can still be friends. Oh, absolutely. Like okay, okay. And this is your office as well here, yeah? yeah, yeah. So what, what, do, what do you do? I'm just the uh, uh, industrial gas, industry, industrial gas. Industrial uh, gas, yeah, yes. you, you do yeah. this. And may also ask you because, you know, it's nice to see like a family establishment like this. Mm -hmm. um, as I understand, most modern population of Taiwan came here after World War II. Yes. Together with uh, Chiang Kai-shek. Uh, yeah, yes. So, yes. so like, what's the story of your family? We have arrived here before maybe Two, three hundred, three hundred years before. Okay. So we signed. We 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 are very. Yeah, two hundred years. That one is two hundred years. Yes, this one. Okay, is so from Qingchao. Uh huh. Yeah. So from Qingchao is the, the city in, in near the coast. Yeah. Uh, no, Qing Dynasty. Qing Dynasty. Qin, from Qing Dynasty. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's, Why it's so interesting for me because, uh, you know, because of so many wars and turbulence and borders are changing in Europe, mm -hmm. many. Uh, fam like most families really struggle to trace back their ancestors' uh, connection yes. more than 100 years ago. Yes. So very rarely 
the fourth generation back mm -hmm. is known to the family, you know? So, so the fact that you kind of, you, you know that 300 years ago your family came here, it, it definitely a um, very uh, symbolic and very important uh, fact. Okay, so now we will try to make this very similar picture we did nine years ago. Let's try to do it. We are driving into the downtown of uh, Taichung. It's pretty modern, pretty modern. But what's also interesting is that there are still a lot of empty lands over here, which are gonna be built up, I believe, pretty, pretty soon. Very cool. It's nice to see a different big city in, in Taiwan. Yeah, this area is a new city town. Mm -hmm. And we also have the old city town just in front of a train station. Okay. The Taichung main train station. The area is the uh, old city town. And now this area is the new city town. New. We'll see how we we'll get back from here to Taipei. But maybe I will try an option from the main uh, train station because the high-speed railway station is kind of a little bit outside the city. So this will give us a different perspective of, of, of traveling here in the country. So another reason why I decided to visit Taichung is to meet one more friend of mine whom I didn't actually meet personally before, but we were just chatting online uh, in Ukraine. Uh, and this is Lee. Lee, hello. Nice to see you. Hello, eventually. Hello. My yeah. name is Lee. <laughs> hello, everyone. <laughs> yeah, and now like you see, we, we were talking online and now we meet each other personally. Yeah, the Taiwan, not the Ukraine, so to me is uh, very sharp because uh, one day he touched a message to me say, hey, I come to Taiwan. I think, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but, but you were in Ukraine, right? Yeah, yeah, in the war. So. In the war? Yeah, yeah. What, what, what did you do there? Uh, beginning in the April, I joined the army. Uh, but we, we got a mission to defense the Kharkiv. We are uh, pushed by the Russia and the Kharkiv, so almost very long distance. And uh, I fighting in my unit. We uh, together going to the Kupiansk. It's uh, difficult to fight. It's like Kupiansk, it's in the east of yeah. Kharkiv. Yeah. Yeah. And also we are uh, uh, my group. We are just go inside, pu uh, push Russia somewhere here. Mm -hmm. I I sleep here almost 20 minutes. Yeah, and my friend said, hey, what are you doing? I said, it's really boring. You cannot do nothing. It's bumping everywhere. So what can you can do? Better way to sleep in. And my, my friend said, oh, okay, you're all right. <laughs> but I think the really difficult is for the spear. No job, no money, no food, no water, no power. But the, some people can got the rich, can live in the, you know, the, uh, the front line, but some people don't have the money, only stay here. So uh, to me, the, for the civilian, it's a uh, really big problem, yeah. Uh-huh, ah, it's with the cat. Yeah, in the bunker. Oh. I was walking out, oh, look at the cutie cat. And then uh, one, the German dog, because the Russian bombing, he uh -huh. just running in the bunker, trying to get to the safety place. Ah, uh, the dog as yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shepherd. shepherd. But, but you also told that you were visiting some people in the villages and paying to them and they were cooking for you, Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in the fun night and uh, we are the base, uh, how do you say, the camp. It's the body hours, so we need to find a house to, we can sleep in, some, do something uh, like a sleeping, yeah. And uh, we also go ask the people, can you cook in the food? But we got to pay for the money because we know the military is no money, no job, because now it's a war, of course. And so we are trying to find the other people, can you cook in some, potato or kasha, we can pay for the money. Mm. I think the, we cannot do too many, so I think we do just best. And we live in the, uh, the say how we, we be, anybody with donation, maybe 1,000 kuna, 500 kuna for the people. Okay, good. For good. the children. So you see, it's, it's not like Russian soldiers who, who steal uh, uh, TV, <laughs> toilet from the people in the village. It's like uh, army, like what, what I also noticed, on the front line when I was traveling and I've got videos from Donbass and Kharkiv area is that 
the soldiers are actually the lifeline for local people because if the soldiers let's say have a starlink that we were sending to them then local people from the villages they were using internet to contact with their relatives you know then the food uh, soldiers were giving food to local people and that's how it works on the frontline area section and also I, my job is the building the starlink every time i build starting and uh, the village come the grandma or all people who want to contact the family i say okay come here just check out and uh, i will be make some um, uh, like a coffee or something or chow mm. yeah i think to him it's very important because you know thinking we got the internet all the time but village people no it's the if you can do something just helping the village people aha uh -huh. so 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 basically you first you took the participation in defensive of Kharkiv yeah, yeah. and guys this is was very important because the front line was actually on the edge of Kharkiv in summer uh, when I was visiting the city so basically you know it was under the threat it was under the siege basically and then what's important Lee participated in one of the most brilliantly made counter-offensives in the east which was it was a silent counter-offensive but like within three days you liberated a huge territory including Izum and mm -hmm. Izum is a very important strategic point also in the east I, I thank you very much for your contribution and for your dedication to Ukraine and it's like really honorable for me to meet you here in your <laughs> home country uh, the only thing I know is that Taiwan and Ukraine should cooperate more yeah, we can yeah. learn from each other yeah, yeah. and this is basically one of the reasons why I visit Taiwan in general because by establishing meaningful connections between the people organizations uh, we become stronger together so all the best for Taiwan all the best to you Lee uh, stay in good health in good mind I'm not sure what's your plan what's your, what's your plan what you are going to do um, now I work in the joint company. The name is the Jingwei. The Geoset is a big company in the Taiwan. The joint company, and also just like a, uh, the Taiwan, the Ukraine can working together for the drone. I think this is look very important because uh, you just fight the drone. If it does something destroy, just drone God, not people got hurt. So I this a very good one. So you you are um, it's a drone drone company yeah, and yeah. you send drones to Ukraine as well. Yeah, or we got this one point. You try. So guys, Donation. Like if, if you're interested in some kind of drone supplies, uh, can I leave your contact near this video? Yeah, yeah, push, push. I can leave the contact of Lee. Just it's important to keep in mind that the war in Ukraine is ongoing and there are like different need supplies and so on. So you know, stay with Ukraine. Remember be in touch with people you know are there and let's just carry on guys so 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 may I ask about the perception of a conflict of, of a danger here because like you know w when i was telling that i'm going to taiwan uh -huh. people told me like oh you go from one hot spot which is ukraine to another hot spot which is taiwan <laughs> like what 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 is the atmosphere here and what do local taiwanese people actually feel Every time when I was travel and uh, I go to Europe or other other place, they will always tell, "Okay, oh, you come from Taiwan. Oh, you come from Asia. It's very really dangerous. We have a North of Korea in Asia. You also have China in Asia. You have a lot of racket. But, but in real our life, when we born, we don't we don't really know what is a war because everybody thinks here is dangerous. But in in the real life, we don't have and. We don't have anything. We don't have any war in this maybe 30 years, 50 years. We don't have any big war. But just like I think it's very peaceful in Europe. It's very peaceful. But when I first been the Croatia, the people living there just to let me know they are very uh, they they just. Uh, re rebuilding from a war because they have uh, built it for many years and and uh, just over the war for maybe 10 years to rebuild in the, the country so it's very different from my mind because we always think ah, it's in the western it's very very peaceful every, every, they are, uh, Europe people are rich everything is good but it's not real it's not real so using this chance I would like to ask how does it work with China hmm. because in, in the opinion from people in Europe, it, it looks like it's just a little bit and China can attack. Yeah. But when I'm here, I see you have like flights operating, you can fly to China, 
there is like international trade happening yes. people are visiting each other like uh, we would imagine it will be like ukraine and russia you know like border is closed no, no, no. Nobody is, playing, is is doing any, any kind of cooperation, but in this situation, it's like feels like really almost integrated in many levels. Uh, in Taiwan, we can very easy to you, you if you want to go to China, it's very easy. You just need like a passport, you can just go. It's very easy. We have a lot of com uh, communication together. We have yeah. a lot of cooperation. Our company, the company there. Uh, we have also a lot of Taiwanese. We have a company, and we have a, a Taiwan factory. We also have another factory in 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 China. Yeah, it's in uh, uh, this years when I born until now. But maybe these two years is maybe little bit change. A lot of the business uh, try to come back from uh, China to Taiwan. Yeah, because maybe the government, maybe the COVID nineteen, a lot of uh, controlling. A lot of things we can control, so maybe it will be changed. But for mm, me and for the teenager or the people likes my age, we we don't really know the war, <laughs> yeah. and uh, we don't need really know the dangers. And to tell the truth, you don't need to to, to know the war. You know, it's better to stay on the good terms, trade. Mm -hmm and live your life, decide for yourself, but trade with people all around the world and the countries around the world, you yeah. know, that's the way. So I wish peace and security to everyone who is watching this video, guys. Yeah, if we have much more connect, mm -hmm. we will know each other. Yeah. We will much more know each other and we, we, we will really know we don't want to fight and we didn't need to fight with each other. Yeah. Okay, so we are guys now entering the old town of Taichung and that's how it looks like. Much more dense with many businesses, a lot of advertisement that I cannot read, obviously. <laughs> but this is how it is. To tell the truth, I still cannot uh, believe I'm in uh, Taiwan. Um, feels like in a dream, meeting the people I met 10 years ago, then meeting only online. And now I'm here, we are, we, are we are driving through the streets of Taichung and it, it's really interesting the way it looks like. It looks developed, but developed in a kind of old-fashioned way, if I can properly tell this. Uh, I hope I will not insult my Taiwanese colleagues with this, but this just feels like a developed economy of a late 20th century with a solid you know, constructions with solid uh, industry, uh, infrastructure, transport, uh, but not like super shiny, modern, as in the newest economies we have, yeah? And I believe in this way, uh, it's much more sustainable because the, the systems that have been built up here half a century ago are still working perfectly now. And this is just the proof that uh, the country was uh, developing in the right direction. So, Lee, you came to Ukraine like around two years ago. Uh, yeah. Like, do, like what, what was driving you? What, what motivated you to come? I think uh, because Taiwan army don't have a uh, combat experience. So I think some must uh, be some people know what kind of uh, the army working in the front line, what kind of stu situation you need to fix that. This is my, my goal, that's it. Uh, at the beginning I joined the army, I really, um, I find so many people never served uh, serve the army before. Just, uh, you know, in the mind, oh, it's easy, take a rifle and kill enemy, but situation is uh, totally different. So I think you want to join the army or you want to join the war, you need to think about, is it you, whether you want it. Yeah. So basically, main motivation for you was gaining experience. Yeah, yeah. Aha, uh -huh. oh, that's interesting. So, are you a professional soldier? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I joined the army, Taiwan army, in four years. So, basically, now having the real combat experience in Ukraine, like, can you train people here, for example, in, in, in Taiwan? Um, I just want, uh, I think the Taiwan army, little bit, I don't know how to say, just uh, I can feel it, the Taiwan army, oh, we don't need this one. So, <laughs> it's a very weird uh, situation. Mm -hmm. uh, but my couple of friends, he's the server of the army now. He wants to know what kind of happen in the front line, what kind we can do. So some of the people ask me, I will tell him what kind of situation we will be. We need to fix. That's it. Mm -hmm. 
well let's hope that you will not need to 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 to, to practice it but you know people take the combat courses mm -hmm. and you know some self defense courses in order not to use it yeah first of all right so that's that's the point and in the meantime we approached our beautiful beautiful train station here in Taichung it looks like uh, from the late 19th century see you next time Lee in Ukraine in Taiwan or somewhere in the world please my friend stay safe yeah wish you all the best to you to your country to my country and to the entire world let's carry on Well, that's it. I hope this video was insightful for you and you had a chance to learn more about the Taiwan and current situation over here. As for me personally, I believe this was a pretty effective visit and I really hope that the things that we've been working on here will have a positive result. Relations between the Taiwan and Ukraine will become much stronger and together we're gonna prosper side by side. At this moment, wish you all the best and looking forward to see you somewhere in the world. Let's carry on.